so we've seen the functions sorted and reversed, right? Now we're going to look at sort of equivalent methods, dot sort and dot reverse. Now, the thing that really differentiates these methods from their associated functions or from those functions is that these modify lists in place. So let's look at that. Let's make a list and um, let's make it a list of animals. Uh, so penguin, uh, dog, right? cat, always, platypus, kangaroo, and a vole. Let's do vole. All right. So if I, if I sort this in place, list.sort, and I print that list. Well, let's print it before. Well, we can see it, so I won't worry about printing it before. Uh, let's just look at what that looks like, right? So if it's sort, it once sort is applied to it, it's going to be cat, dog, kangaroo, penguin, platypus, bull. Recall that, let's say, I capitalize bull. Recall that because these are in ASCII, capital V is going to be a lower value than the lowercase uh, c. Okay, so we can do list.sort, and we can also, we can then reverse the sort, right? So list.reverse, and if we run that, Notice that we still have vol capitalized. Um, that's the lowest value, and that has moved to the end. And now we're in reverse al alphabetical order, in, according to ASCII. I'm going to go ahead and lowercase vol one more time. Now we could uh, take this a little further. Like what happens if we just do lst dot sort dot reverse? Oh, I need an e in there. Now, unlike JavaScript, the none type of dot sort, right? Because dot sort is not returning anything, it's operating directly on LST. Because it's operating directly on LST, it's not returning anything, there is nothing for dot reverse to operate on. So, unlike the chaining you can do in JavaScript, in this instance you can't do that. So, this is going to be LST dot sort and then LST dot reverse and that'll work.